malpractices. Oh, right. Well, I heard that show didn't get picked up. You also read for A Mind of a Married Man, too. At the jockey's wife? Are you memorizing that? Oh, no, no, just studying. Oh. Uh, do you happen to know who got those parts? Which part? The sister of the boxer? Uh, no. <coughs> yes? Or the jockey's wife? Either. Both. Well, the same actress got them both. Patty Scherer? Patty Scherer. I knew it. Patty Scherer. Patty Scherer. You know what? Every part my agent sends me out on, every single part, Patty Scherer gets. Uh, you care for a minute? doing an accent. Accent? Well, for the, for the scientist. What kind of accent? Foreign? I think she's American. So you're not doing an accent. Well, I was thinking about going for a French accent. Madame Curie, the scientist. You don't think that I should? Well, if you practice it that way, it's a choice. Well, yes. Yes, it, it is a choice. Well, I never really know about choices. And my agent always says that they like it when you make choices, but I'm not so sure. I mean, I've been making choices, like strong choices, but they haven't really been panning out for me. And I, I really need to work. Like, like, I really, really need to work, and I'm sorry. I'll let you concentrate. The director is. Have you ever read for him? Oh. oh. Well, my friend Annette sent me the monster. She read for him for a movie of the week, and he ate his lunch the entire time. He can be a jerk. That's all I need. Uh, can I ask you, is this lipstick? Well, the color of my lipstick. Is it all right? I've never really worn this shade before. It looks good on you. It's a good color for you. You think so? Really? I do. It's a good choice. Well, thanks. Well, I don't know. I, I felt like it was a scientist's choice. I don't really know why. I, I guess sometimes you have to go with your gut. So, Patty Scherer. Uh, do you get this light thing? They're not going to expect us to know that, do you think? Stopping light? They won't grill us about it. Probably not. Well, I don't know. I read for the part of a veterinarian once, and they expected me to know everything about dogs and digestive systems. So I just kind of winged it. I talked about heartworm. I mean, I've seen them before, in jars, and... You know, it, it's not just about the money for me. Truth be known, I am feeling kind of stuck. <clears throat> You know, if he's in there, stuffing his face with California pizza, cuckoo, shrew, chicken, I... So, you said you read for him. I used to go out with him. Oh, you used to go out with him. You used to go out with Ethan Schroeder? Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Oh, what I said, I'm sure he's not a monster. Uh, maybe he was just hungry when my friend read for him. I, I'm sure he's perfectly. It's okay. There are a lot of people who think he's a jerk. <laughs> oh, they do. And you're not going out with him anymore? But you're still friends? Oh, well, I mean, you're okay with reading for him. I really like this part. You do? Yeah. How often does that happen? <laughs> yeah. Really? It's you must really like this part. I find the subject matter fascinating. I've read quite a bit about it. Oh, so light travels at 180,000 miles an hour a second. Right, and then they stop it in a jar, like heartworm. They freeze it in formaldehyde. A chilled 
sodium gas, actually. And it just hangs there, frozen. Well, the light goes out. It gets fainter and fainter as it slows down. The most amazing part to me, and it's all amazing, is they can revive the light at any time by flashing a second beam of light through the gas. Oh, they can take a beam of light, bring it to a full stop, hold it, and then send it on its way with a second beam. Well, I like things best when I can go deep and, you know, cry. I really like emotion. Back down this theater. Not a lot of emotion in these scenes, not all sensibly. Well, no. That's why I was thinking about going with French. You go for the accent. You think so? Really? Excuse me, are your pages with the reporter marked May 11th or May 15th? Uh, the reporter? I don't Meg. Hi, Patty. Hi, how are you? It's so good to see you. Are you here now? I'm here. You know, I heard that. I was talking to Carolyn. She was uh, stage managing Vanya at the taper. Well, she said you'd move back. <laughs> I did. Great. And you're reading for Ethan. I am. Wow. How's Olivia? Olivia's three! God help me. You know, Meg, I forgot my lipstick. Do you have to have that I could borrow? I'm sorry. I actually left all my makeup in the car. Really? What were you thinking? Uh, I have some makeup. Great. Thanks. Oh. And the color that you're wearing? Uh-huh. Yeah, that color? I admire you, Meg. Reading for Ethan? Takes guts. Not really. The way he treated you? You know Carolyn's first AD. You know they're an item now, Ethan and Carolyn. She's pregnant! <laughs> so I want to come. Thanks, Sergeant. Where are you going? she even want this part? It's not even a big part. Patty Sharer is not going to get this part. Yes, she is. No, she's not. Yes, she is. She's already in there and she already has the part. Ethan can't stand Patty Sharer. He's not going to give her this part. He's going to give you this part because it's your part. He can't stand her. Jennifer, listen to me. Light is emotion. Think of light, a beam of light, as a story. A story with its own past, its own history. The light has been who knows where, 
has illuminated who knows what. Maybe it's been traveling for a long, long time, decades, centuries, and somewhere along this journey, it starts to slow down, take a pause, fold into itself. Okay? So now imagine that you're at the theater. You're in the audience, and you're watching a play. You say you love theater? I do. Why are you doing this? So the curtain has just opened, and there are three people on stage, and they're still not moving. Who are these people, these characters? What is their past, their history? We don't know. At the beginning of the play, we don't know anything about them at all. Their pasts are frozen, suspended. Then the play begins, and we begin to learn things about them. Information unfolds. One character leaves. Facts are revealed. Maybe we learn that this character really needs something. Or maybe that this character has a dream, a passion. Maybe that this one has been hurt. It's been hurt really, really badly. We don't know how. Within minutes, we can learn so much about them. In less than 10 minutes, we can see the DNA of their entire lives. And, and though they're still mysteries, we feel we know them quite well. And then there comes that moment, that inevitable, pivotal moment in the scene when things change. The epiphany, the revelation. Something is illuminated. I think that you're trying to say something, but I'm not sure what it is. I think you should put your hair back. Here, take my clip. That's good. You look like a scientist. What did Ethan Schroeder do to you that was so bad? Nothing terribly original. Well, you're not going to audition for this part? No. Well, one thing. I may be very emotional right now, but for you mainly. Use it. Hold it inside. And on one more thing. I would suggest you drop the accent. Really? You don't need it. And another thing, when you go in there, tell Ethan that he looks like a young Richard Burton. Okay. I can do that. I can do that. This is your part. I know. This is my part. This is my part. <laughs> 